Thank you very much, Hervé. Uh, if anyone has a question, uh, please write them in the chat. Um, in the meantime, Hervé, while people are writing their questions, maybe you can tell us more about other types of machine learning models available on the platform that we could be implementing in our future strategies. Absolutely. So um, usually this, this approach of uh, having many batches has been developed to handle uh, deep learning models, so neural networks. And uh, the reason why um, the, the batch was so important was because, uh, as I said earlier on, um, if you want to build a deep network, then uh, the number of parameters grows exponentially and you cannot recompute everything uh, at every uh, every time you want to to learn something or or do a step, so uh, that's why uh, what what's called stochastic gradient descent was invented. And so stochastic gradient descent, what it does, it does gradient descent. So it, it tries and compute the gradient uh, of your model, but only on a small subset. Uh, and uh, the assumption is that over time, and this this is uh, going to uh, basically. Um, be close to the real value of your gradient and you can only uh, trust this smaller uh, subset of your gradient to do your your step and you're going to learn uh, to, to to gain considerable time doing this so from this historical uh, let's say anecdote um, you i wanted to say that you can uh, implement on the platform obviously neural networks uh, models and uh, and use that approach uh, for them to be efficient uh, obviously, you can also uh, use more traditional models uh, such as uh, regressions or uh, regularized regressions with this approach. Uh, the idea being that uh, you are going to have a, a model that's going to be much faster and that is going to anyway have uh, the right amount of data uh, to get the most of what you're trying to do or predict. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it doesn't seem like we have any questions at the moment. We'll just wait for maybe one minute more, and uh, if everything was clear, then we'll, uh, we'll close the webcast. Thank you. Okay, we have a question here from Hamza, who is asking us, why do we need to roll models? Okay, so maybe I can go back to... Uh, to these, these examples basically uh, we are dealing with time series that's the assumption when we are building uh, uh, financial models uh, every uh, mostly uh, every data that we uh, manipulate our time series meaning that at present there is uh, a set that is ending today but tomorrow there will be a, a set that is growing that is larger than what it was yesterday uh, so or today so uh, we need a way to uh, basically handle the fact that new data is constantly uh, getting, uh, getting out. And uh, this is basically uh, why we need to, to roll the model. So we need to, let's say today is here, this first red dot. Uh, so we don't see anything that's on the right. Well, we need a way to, when the new dots are going to, uh, to get live or to exist, we need a way to uh, manage our model so that it can handle it. And so the way we do that is to be able to follow along, to roll uh, in the future, basically, or to roll forward uh, in order to, um, to be able to, uh, to cope with them, to cope with the new data. So um, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much why, why we do rolling. Now, uh, there is also uh, a way by doing this rolling correctly, uh, we are basically avoiding any sort of biases. Uh, if you just take the whole data set and uh, just train it, on the, uh, just train your model on the whole data set, you, are, you can or there is a chance that you introduce what's called a forward-looking bias, basically using data here to predict points here in the past. So using future data to predict something in the past, but at this very point here, if you just draw a line, you didn't see this data. So it's very important that the model rolls forward 
uh, and doesn't uh, doesn't use any uh, data that was not available uh, when uh, when the, the, the investment decision was uh, was to be made. So that's pretty much why rolling is very important. And there is uh, there, there are many many ways that you can get rolling wrong, and uh, and there are uh, a few ways you can get rolling right too. So it's very important to, to be meticulous right, uh, about it and uh, make sure that uh, the rolling is done correctly. All right, thank you very much. Let's, let's uh, give it another couple of uh, seconds to see if any more questions pop up on the chat. Meanwhile, I can, I can try and show just for testing purposes, how to use what has been done within uh, within uh, a model or an algo engine, and that's just for illustration purposes uh, and for quick uh, quick development and quick uh, and quick um, quick testing. So here, I'm just re reproducing here. Um, the, what I've just done above, but this time I'm using Algo Engine. So on the platform, Algo Engine is, is a way to generate a, a single asset strategy. And I've just modified the structure of Algo Engine so that it does basically these steps. So obviously this is just for testing because I already have data in my local environment uh, here, it's here. So I can on, only do that for testing. But if I run this, uh, within the the usual um, structure or the usual pipeline we have on Alfian to create a strategy, uh, then basically uh, this should give me the same result that what I've done manually here, the three steps. Uh, here we go. And that's giving me the same results. Okay, so that's... Um, that's how you can integrate it within our framework at Alfian. Uh, by using this data generator, actually, you can uh, create a payout that is, rather than taking in data, is taking in a data generator. And then you can just uh, build a quickly a strategy on that. What it means also is that you can also do the same thing for other, other underlying asset if you want to test it, uh, which I haven't done, but you can quickly, quickly create another another payout like this and have a second uh, strategy on a different uh, underlying uh, asset. Here it's the current market uh, and, uh, and then eventually uh, you, can, uh, you could build a portfolio with those two, with those two, uh, two strategies here. Uh, you can uh, create a portfolio and backtest it. So that's, uh, that's how you can, uh, in a few lines of code, basically do a lot of, uh, do a lot of testing and a lot of, uh, and a lot of uh, analysis just for, uh, for fine-tuning and for, and for trying out your, your results. Um, just be aware that when we push that into production, you need to explicitly tell us which data that is, uh, that is used. So that means that you will have to probably create uh, a function so that it takes in the tickers so that we are able on our side to recreate it and then paper trade it, paper trade it. But once we, we have the, the correct, uh, the correct uh, syntax in, uh, of, of your strategy, then this part of the code here uh, is continuing trading, so training, so that in the future, maybe a year from now, two years from now, uh, your model will still continue training from uh, from what you have done in the past and this will keep on uh, working in the future so that's uh, that's the main messages I want uh, main message I wanted to deliver today and uh, I hope uh, that was uh, that, that was well understood thank you Abe. we have two more questions on the chat yeah uh, the first one from Tiong, maybe it's something we need to take offline. Uh, she's asking why, when running the template, uh, she's getting a different result. Uh, and she's posted in the chat the results of her backtest. If you want to take a look. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. So that's, uh, okay, that's because in the version that is native, and that's, that's a good exercise, actually. 
uh, I have uh, taken by default a smaller initial, initial batch, batch size like this so if I do that and I, I train it initially on a smaller batch um, and that's that's joining the question from what Matt earlier on uh, it's going to give me completely different results because now my initial training is done on, on a very small data set uh, that is uh, not giving me as much information obviously as what it was before and uh, if I just run my back test then the result is completely different yeah. I, have a, I have a strategy that is not that great uh, whilst when I use a bit more data at first so to train initially my model then it becomes uh, it becomes quite uh, more powerful. So that's uh, that's what uh, I, I hinted at before. You need to make sure that uh, the initial uh, period where you train gives enough information to your model to have some sort of generalization uh, power, and then uh, feed it extra batches and iterate or train at the margin. Thank you very much, Harry. Another question from Otman, who's asking, um, you said it's important to train the next batch on the last model. Is it interesting to retrain the same batch, but with a different algorithm? Yeah, absolutely. You can do that, Otman. And you can, uh, what you can do is use the same batch, uh, have uh, two, three models uh, being trained on that batch, and then do, uh, do some sort of ensembling or taking an average of the, of the few models that you have trained on the same batch. Uh, and uh, and hope that it's going to generalize better uh, thanks to ensembling and uh, and reduce the uh, any sort of biases uh, in this model. But um, that's something you need to train basically. Uh, you, you need to you need to try. Uh, but that's a good idea. I, I, I would definitely try that. Okay. Uh, thank you. A follow up question from Otman. Uh, He's asking how you can choose the optimal look back and batch size. Uh, that's unfortunately uh, quite fiddly and uh, you need to basically test them out. Uh, my advice is not to, to go too small, uh, especially initially because you want your model to, to be able to get some information. Uh, but then the, 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 the batch size uh, you can you can see what what works best. It's going to be a trade-off between how fast you want your model to uh, to move forward and uh, and how uh, um, let's say how much information you think the data is getting uh, through time. And if if it's a very uh, very information-intensive type of uh, of series, you you may want to retrain more frequently. If not, you may want to. Uh, you just leave it, uh, leave it retrain only, uh, offered, uh, only uh, at few occasions. So it's really, it's really um, um, try and error, as I would say, and, and try to, uh, to find what works, what seems to work best, and try from there to find a, a rule of thumb. But there is no, uh, uh, there is no rule that is set in stone at the moment. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, there was a, a question from Yuski who was asking where we can find uh, the template for the webinar. So I've posted it in the chat for those interested. It was written at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, if you type full template strategy webinar, you will download the, the full script uh, inside your environment. Um, once again, the, the full command is in the chat if you want to copy and paste it. Okay. Thanks, Orian. Uh, do we have any more questions? No, it seems like this is it. Uh, so thank you very much, Hervé, for this presentation. And thank you, everybody, for attending. Hopefully, we'll be uh, speaking again soon. And uh, have a good end of week. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Orian. Have a good day.